and welcome to Yodlington on Sea. Today, uh, I'll be a prince at a preserved railway. I'll be showing off some uh, new stocks that I got at a model railway exhibition, and I'll be unboxing some more vehicles for my layout. So yes, hello again. Um, welcome to Bjorgen and Sea. It's been a while since I've actually had time to make a video. Um, and like I said, in this video I'll be showing some footage of going to the North Norfolk Railway and um, going to a model railway exhibition. And I'll show off what I've got at the exhibition. But first up, I'm going to run some trains onto the layout and then I'll do some footage of those running. So the first thing we have here is on the inside line. And it's the Hornby X Thomas 040 in LBSC livery. It's the theme for the start of this. It's number 629, and it's got my new Trying Pedigree Prams uh, container wagon from Hornby. And then on the middle line, we have a short stopping passenger service. Being called by my Hornby LBSC E2, uh, designed by Norse and Billington in 19... well they were made in about 1913, 1916, but this model's obviously much later than that. Um, pulling the LBSC generic coaches from Hornby as well. So they match. That one's a bit noisy. And on the outside line I have this. Which, sadly I don't have the bogey LBSC coaches, so I'm using Southern Railway Mornsall coaches. And this is the Buckman E4579, designed by R.J. Billington in like the late 1800s. Um, so that's what I'm going to be running today. So I'm going to get those uh, going and you'll get to see them running with their sort of matching rolling stock. Um, the 040 actually has a Hornby LBSC brake band as well. And I did have some um, Brighton themed wagons from Dapple that I was going to run in the, the rake of that, but unfortunately um, their couplings are a bit too groovy. So, never mind. So here we go with the, the O4O. So here goes the E2. And there might be a few other LDSs that have been dotted around on the layer.
I'll uh, I can stop there. Uh, bring the E card to the stop. And E2 to the middle of There you go. And so we'll just slow that down now. So, I hope you like seeing those run. I have noticed that my signal has fallen over, so I'll fix that in a second. Uh, but for now, uh, when I was over in England uh, a couple of weeks ago, my dad drove me and my partner and the kids up to Sheringham and we went on the North Norfolk Railway and I got a few bits of film and stuff like that so I thought I'd include some footage of real steam trains because I hadn't actually been to a railway obviously since before the pandemic so it was really nice to actually uh, go and experience that and the locomotives that were running is uh, British Railways 9F Black Prince and the Y14 in Great Eastern Railways uh, livery so I'll uh, show that footage now and I'll sort out that signal. Hello and welcome to Bjorklington on Sea, except this time I'm in Sheringham.
So as you can see, the weather was fantastic. We were really blessed with the, the sunshine there and we got to go down to the amusements uh, and stuff as well in Sharon. But it was just nice to be there with the atmosphere and the steam and the smell of that because you know you just can't get that when you're running a model railway. Uh, although I'm sure if you paid enough you could probably get some sort of accessory that actually did that. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so while we were over there, my mum drove us to the outside of Norwich and we went to a model railway exhibition there and I got a small bit of footage but there was just so many people there I couldn't even stand at a layout for too long because of what people like push it past or whatever. Um, and uh, I got some models there as well second hand and it was nice to be able to get second hand models off of an actual trade stand because you know you just can't do that over here. Um, because there's only one or two exhibitions and they're the other side of the country. But um, I'll show that footage and then we'll go over to my desk and I'll show you what I got from the model railway exhibition. And then I suppose I'll put them on the layout and we can see whether anything actually works. Hello and welcome to my desk. Here we have this. This is the exhibition I went to, which is the Norwich Railway Heritage and Model Society, Norwich Model Railway Club, 2022 exhibition, 9th of April at Hillersdon High School. And that's just a, um, the little booklet of all the layouts and stuff. But I was at that exhibition and I picked up some coaches. So I got these. Hornby clerestory coaches, um, there's a brake coach and um, obviously the non-brake coach which has a third and a first uh, compartment, I'll see if I can change the brightness, oops, hang on, there, you should be able to see them a bit better now, there's a bit of dirt or something here that I need to sort out and on one end of this coach there is a buffer missing, but it doesn't matter too much because that will be, because the way the couplings are, that will be like that, see, because they only have a hook on one on each end. So you won't really see that the, the buffer's not there. Um, I'm so happy, because normally I only see, like, one of them at a time, like on Hattons or something. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to buy one, because then I'll have to wait to get the other one. So I saw the two of them together for a tenner each, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll have those. Um, so they might look nice with my repainted trying 3F. So I'll just pop those over there. And then I also got this coach. Ta -da! It's a Trying Railways Diner coach, but it's of the sort of transcontinental um, style. It says Trying, made in England, written on the bottom. Uh, it does have the uh, older style of uh, axles that are split on the, like, the two halves of the plastic axle on a metal rod. Uh, with the open axle boxes, so I don't know how well that will run, but we'll see. I haven't actually put any of these on the, the layout yet to test, because I've been waiting to do this video. Um, but that's nice. I said I wanted more of the transcontinental stuff, so I, I've started. It, it probably won't match quite well with the um, the stock card thing that I've got, but yeah, I'm just happy with that. As you see, it was £7.50. And then I also got some wagons. And I paid the eye watering price of fifteen pounds for this wagon because it had this wagon with it, which is the Hornby Thomas and Friends Raspberry Syrup Tanker. And I do need to get a new chassis for it, but that shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, I could just rob this chassis to be honest and put the Pepsi one onto this one for now. Um, this does need gluing. So that's something I could potentially do, but I'll be running this when I'm testing the other stock 
I could couple this at the end of the train, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so that works out as £7.50 each, which is probably not so bad, um, especially for the raspberry syrup tanker, because some people charge absolutely ridiculous stuff for the X, um, Thomas Swanby stuff, whatever it is, because they don't make it anymore. Um, and then I have one more wagon, which is this, which cost me £5.50, and it is a tank rentals. This is obviously a rental tanker for transporting um, stuff, but it's just to add to my um, tanker train, which I'm working on expanding, but you'll see more of that in another video um, when I have my Hatton's trunks um, arriving. So that um, has metal axles. I'm not sure what the story is with the massive screws on the couplings. Uh, maybe they were changed over at some point, but yeah, they look good. And then... The best buy that I got was this, which cost me £35. And it is, in fact, a trying Lord of the Isles. And, you know, I thought, oh, that, that's nice, I want that. And then I didn't buy it. And then we were waiting to be picked up. And Sinead was like, oh, do you want to go back in and have another look? And I was like, mm, yeah. So I went back in and it was still there, and I said, oh, oh, does it work? And he said, yes, it does, so we'll find out if it works. Um, but uh, at first I was actually looking at this little clockwork engine, which was in a, a box of spare parts, and I said, how much is that? And he said, oh, it'll be a couple of quid, because, you know, it's just in the spare parts box or whatever. And I said, oh, well, how much for the two of them? And he said, well, do you know what, this is £35, so just stick this in your pocket and you can have it for free. Um, since I don't know if it works, and so we'll have to see now, I mean the wheels go around, uh, but I'll have to see if I can wind it, I haven't got a key, so I'll have to take the body off, try to break it, and get some pliers and open that up, so um, we'll have that to test, but the interesting thing about this, and I do have the tender, although I need to get a new coal load for it, or make one, um, is this little piece of cardboard off the box here, which tells you that it's the R354S, Lord of the Isles loco with smoke and magna adhesion. So apparently this has a smoke generator fit to it. And if I take it out of the box, be careful because I think the chimney cap is loose. You can see that there is in fact a yellow wire going up that way. And I think that's for the sooth generator that's probably inside it, but I haven't opened it up. There is a little bit of a crack um, just here where it might have been over tightened in the past. So there may be a working smoke generator inside this. And hopefully it will work, the loco. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It's got lovely, shiny, um, I don't know, is that electroplate or whatever they call it? Um, dome or whatever on it. But um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that anyways. And it only costs £35. And it still has a sort of box. So now we can go and test those on the railway. Oh wait, actually, hang on a minute. I did get some more stuff while I was in England. In Sheringham, there was a model railway shop. Can't remember exactly what it's called. Might be Smith's or something. Anyways, um, and I saw this in the window, and it is a Lima brake fan, which says "car" on the side of it. So it must be for like a car transport or train. Um, so maybe I'll have to get some car transport wagons now to go with that. But I just love the colour because it, it, I'll use it for a post train maybe because it looks like the Royal Mail colours. That is. Uh, a fiver that cost me while I was in Sheringham, so that was nice. And in Stowe Market, in a shop called DJ Collectibles, my daughter Charlotte picked out this lovely Coleman's mustard uh, lorry. It's an AEC van, um, so I've got that to put on on the railway, along with the other things. And in the collector shop, I also picked up this lovely Backman wagon for ten pounds. And that is a uh, Comflat with BD Crimson Container BR Western Region 37951 is the product code. Um, so that's nice. I'll have some more British Railway stuff to run. I can run it in the train with the new that new um, trying container as well. So um, yeah, I'll go get these added to some trains or whatever, and we'll see if they work. Right, so now I have the stuff off of the desk and onto the layout. 
We have Lord of the Isles here, the transcontinental coaches here. I've got the clockwork engine here and the two clerestries. I've got the Bachman container wagon, the Pepsi wagon, the rental tank, the red brake van, and the raspberry syrup tanker at the end because it's only got a coupling on one end. So I'm going to start the LBSC locomotive running first and get that out of the way. And then we'll test the Lord of the Isles. And hopefully it works, because I've not actually tested anything. So, uh, we'll get that train out of the way. Now the interesting thing with the, the Lord of the Isles is it says it's fitted with a suit of smoke generator. But I actually have no way, um, you know, testing that out because I don't have any syringe or smoke oil or anything um, to put in that at the moment but we will see now if she will actually move anyways right wait until that gets that shot right. time for the moment of truth slowly apply the power Oop. Oh, yeah, that's uh, I've got the power on my HM2000 up to 50%, and it seems to be running fairly smoothly actually. If it's took the points there, it's probably got a lot of drag on it because of the transcontinental coaches' um, axles, but they both seem to be going around the layout fine. Is something right. I've just parked those out of shot so I can test the clockwork engine, which I don't know if it, it works or not. Um, I took the body off and I got some pliers and I've turned the, um, what's it called, the thing that the clockwork key goes on, because I don't have the, I don't have the key itself, so hopefully it works, I say that with a lot of things these days, um, they seem to go around a little when I was winding it up, um, but I thought I'd save seeing whether it actually works for the video, so, get the map ready, one, two, three, So, let's take it off, it's unclipped anyway, it comes again. Woo. It's a good thing it's pulling the clerestries because they're quite lightweight, I don't think it will pull the, um, the trying transcontinental dining coach, I don't think it could. We're speeding up again now. Well, it's slowed down now. Oh, I think it's uh, it might have run out of um, clockwork winding. Although, there we go. Come on. Very bright. There we go. Oh, it's up again now. Well, anyway, that's all we'll get out of that. So I'll just get a little bit of um, footage of Lord of the Isles running, I suppose. So I've swapped things around now, I've put this on the siding and I've coupled up the lightweight clerestory coaches to Lord of the Isles and I've put it on the middle road because the outer um, road has 
um, these points here. And every time Lord of the Isles comes around the corner, it jumps a bit on the points, uh, which is making it stop sometimes because it's just giving it a bit of a jump. So I thought I would put it on the middle line, which has no points on it at all, and see if it will run nice and smooth. I have found that you need about 40 or 50% power on the controller so you to go around them. I suppose it is quite old. So it was a bit dark there. Wasn't it? seems to work pretty good. I'd have to do a video at some point opening up my Lord of the Hours and see if I can figure out the smoke generator. But for now, um, I've actually got some more road vehicles over on my desk to unbox and then I can place them on the layout. So uh, we'll go over and do that. Well, yes, we're back at the desk again. And this time I have one, two, three, four things to unbox. So first one, i just show them in their boxes first, is this Land Rover in a British Railways um, paint job. This one is a Strato Silver 4 Capri Mark III. And they're both from Oxford. And then I have a Classics um, is a Triumph Herald 1360 Estate Mid Blue 1968. And I picked this one because there's an interesting thing that says to open bonnet, see instructions inside, which means there's an open bonnet. And of course, I saw this while I was in England, and I had to have it, because it's an, a 67 Ford GT40 Mark IV in the golf colour scheme. Um, you can have that parked outside the pub, because how could I not? Um, so yeah, I'll just uh, get these unboxed, and we can have a look at them. Right, so I've simplified things now, I've removed this stuff, so I should be able to just go... Don't need that anymore. And here we have the uh, Land Rover. I'll just bring it up here and get it into focus for you. There you go. It does say British Railways on the totem. And you can see if I do this. Whoop, there's the license plate. And there's a spare tyre on the uh, uh, bonnet in case they should break down on the way to a job. And there's a nice window through. Look, you can see all the way through the thing. The steering. Anyways, that would be good to go with my um, other British Railways vehicles. And then this is the, I'll just give it a bit, um, my Silver Ford Capri, which is very nice. Um, it's just a shame that I don't have like, like a way of getting people inside them so that they look more realistic. But uh, I suppose they'll just be parked cars. Um, Focus keeps changing, which is <laughs> I have to keep moving it around. But there you go. There's a nice kind of like um, metallic, sparkly paint job on that. Anyways, so I'll put that there, and then this is the Triumph Herald and art instructions. It says so. There's that. I like that. That's very nice. <laughs> so it's a, a lovely shade of blue. And it says, uh, grasp bonnet between thumb and forefinger and then pull gently upwards about three millimeters. Tilt the bonnet into the open position and press lightly to close. Please note that the bonnet opens to a 45 degree angle. To avoid breakage, do not force the bonnet to open any further. And there's a little card as well. Uh... So far, we've released over 100 different casting and decorated variants in our classics range. For a copy of the story so far, listing all the releases and details of the Classics Collectors Club, send a stamped addressed envelope. Mm, I don't know if that would still be a thing that you can do. So we're going to try now this three millimetres of things with squeeze and pull up to a 45 degree angle. What's that? <laughs> Is that... 
45 degrees, yeah. I guess that that's 45 degrees. You can actually see this some sort of, uh, I think it's meant to be the car battery and something else. Well, not having seen under the bonnet of a Triumph uh, Herald Estate, I wouldn't know how accurate that is. But I suppose you could have a man looking into it, or, or a woman, and saying, Oh no, my car's broken down. Um, or a mechanic coming to fix it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And finally, we will actually have to tear this open. Exactly. Will be a Texas piece because they usually mass produced these days. There we are. Hot Wheels Ford GT40 2020 written on the bottom. That one is made in Malaysia. 1967 Ford GT40 Mark IV GRX30, it says on the bottom. And it's quite cool that it's got see through lights and things as well. But I saw it in the shop and I was like, oh yeah, I have to have that. And you can see the engine cover here, bit or whatever it is, you can see in there. So yeah, I'm going to put those on to the railway. Um, obviously, this is massively out of scale compared to uh, these vehicles, I would say. But uh, we're not too strict about that on... on Juggling to non sea, apparently. Right, over to the layout, I suppose. So I've decided for now to park the GT40 down at the Swan, um, the pub in Juggling to non sea, next to the Lamborghini Miura, which is a matchbox model, and the doors do open on that. Uh, so they stop there for a drink, and on its way up the hill is the Ford Capri. The Triumph is actually just passing by the station. And uh, they might want to do something about that because it looks like their bonnet's coming up a bit. And over here, we have the British Railways Land Rover parked outside the signal box. So maybe that's the um, signalman's ride. I don't know. Could be. Just stop and ask him, I suppose. So yeah, they look lovely anyways. And there are a bit more scale cars populating the layout now as opposed to all the other massive ones. So yeah. I think that looks all right. <laughs> well, that's all I have time for in this episode. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed with my videos on my channel over the last few weeks. I know I've not been on uh, very much. I'll try to keep up with uh, some new reviews on the Buckington Review uh, video thing. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do some more work on Project Oldwood over here. And my next video well, hopefully it won't, won't be too long till we get around to doing that video. Um, I have three boxes that have arrived from Hatton's. I have my Hatton's trunk shipped, so I have lots of stuff to open up and look through. So that's what my next video will be about. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. And I suppose I'll just run these trains now to play out the video. channel or find some other videos um, to watch from my channel as well so yeah <laughs>